time again for some real education. Raphael, our last day, God bless him, on the great Renaissance painter. This is Raphael Week on Instant Classics. I mentioned yesterday that the transformation was among my favorites. This probably is my very favorite painting by Raphael. It's the very famous School of Athens. Take a look at the picture. Uh, it's beautiful. The, uh, uh, the, 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 it's a, a brilliant example of how to use perspective and depth. There you are standing before the picture frame, and it is done the, the, at, the, 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 at the bottom right front. You can see how his painted uh, stonework almost projects right up against you. You stand against that. It's, it's, you're, you're looking deep, deep into this long hall, right? You've got that beautiful arch that takes you back to another arch, which takes you back behind it to another arch, which gives way to the city of Athens. Way in the background, you can see the blue sky. Just a masterpiece of creating depth. And of course, what can we say about its content? This School of Athens is a fresco by Raphael. It was painted sometime between 1509 and 1511 as part of Raphael's commission to decorate the rooms now known as the Stanze di Raffaello in the Apostolic Pal Palace in the Vatican. The Stanza was the first of the rooms to be decorated, and the School of Athens, representing philosophy, was probably the third painting to be finished there. The painting is notable for its accurate perspective uh, projections, which Raphael learned from Leonardo, the rebirth of ancient Greek philosophy and culture in Europe, that's the Renaissance baby, along with Raphael's work, were inspired by Leonardo's individual pursuits in the theater, engineering, optics, geometry, physiology, anatomy, history, etc. The work has long been seen as Raphael's masterpiece and the perfect embodiment of the classical spirit of the Renaissance. That's the entire uh, mathematical, philosophical, intellectual history of Greece right there. All the famous thinkers, all the mathematicians, all the great philosophers are there at the very center of the picture of close, uh, of course, are uh, Plato and Aristotle, right? There's Plato, you know him. He's got a book under his arm and he points to the heavens because that's the origin of all things, God. Right? Plato's theology, uh, philosophy goes right back to the creator. Then you've got the younger man, Aristotle, whose hand is straight out. He doesn't deny creation. He doesn't not deny God. But his studies, his philosophy was anchored more in the material realities of the world. So you've got the two great philosophers of the ancient world, both who believe in God as the creator, one who focuses on the God as the source of all things, the other who tries to create what you and I would know today as independent science. And if you take a look at this picture right here, here, in the bottom right-hand corner of this painting, there he is, Raphael painted himself, the second one from the right, staring right at you from the canvas. Uh, Raphael puts himself among the great classic masters of the ancient world. I like it.